Hello, and welcome to the Colorado Division of Housing Mobile Home Park Oversight Program series of registration training videos. It is January of 2023, and my name is Cassie Vandermeer. I am the Program Specialist for Registrations. I will be guiding you through several short videos to help better explain new registration requirements with the state and generally how to fill out the registration forms and provide all the required supporting documents. This video will go over the address list that must be submitted with your annual registration form to the division. Due to the changes in state law that became effective on October 1st, 2022, the address list requests more than just the physical addresses of the lots and the types of structures on those lots that we've requested in the past. New items that must be included on your address list are mailing addresses for the mobile home owners and for any lot with a mobile home on it, the date and the amount of the most recent rent increase. We have provided a template for your ease of use to provide all this information with your registration forms. The template is available as an Excel sheet or a, for the Google Savvy, a Google sheet. It's available here on our registration webpage at cdola.colorado.gov backslash mobile dash home dash park dash registration and it's under the mobile home address list instructions and templates header. Uh, we do have an instruction sheet as a PDF to give some written out guidance on how to fill out the templates. Otherwise, you have the actual templates here. You'll see view links. These ones open up to just a preview of what each of the types of sheets look like. Um, they're ever so slightly different because Google Sheets allows for checkboxes. Um, so you'll see on this one, it has little check boxes, whereas Excel sheets don't do that function. Um, then you also, of course, have your download button for the Excel version, which when you click that, it just automatically starts a download down here and you can click that to open it. Um, if you're a Google Sheet user, if you click the copy to Google Drive button here, you'll have this option for make a copy. <laughs> Um, you'll have an option for make a copy here, which should then let you copy it to your own Google Drive without having any issues, uh, hopefully. Um, we're going to use the Excel sheet for now. When you open up the Excel sheet, you'll probably have to have this little enable editing button. Um, the only spaces you won't really be able to edit are going to be, you know, the actual main headers of anything. You can click on them, but you won't be able to type into them. But this field, this field, and of course, all of these lines, you can type anything into to provide your address list information. If you have a preference to use your own spreadsheet because you already have a built spreadsheet for your lots, uh, we do ask that uh, if you are going to do it that way, that you at least add in the required information that is now needed um, with your registration forms. And you can look at our templates to give you an idea of like what you should be adding to your own template and you can submit that. Um, so moving on to a few notes and answers that we've to frequently asked questions that we've often gotten about filling out the address list. Um, first, we're going to just kind of go through the columns here one by one uh, for the lot physical addresses. This is the same as in previous years, you provide the address where the lot for the mobile homes and um, potentially other structures are located. Um, if the park address and the, like the lot address is the same across all lots in the park, it is okay to do a consecutive numbering thing where you add uh, the address the street address once and then do like one, two, three, four. So for example, we do something like this. You just do number one and then you can start doing number two. And then for those that knew, know how to do Excel, you can also do this drag drop thing and it automatically numbers. So you can do consecutive numbers like this. We will accept this. Um, if per chance you have almost consecutive numbers um, and say, it goes from five to seven without lot six. Just, you don't have to skip a line, just um, jump to that next number. So then it looks like this. Um, we don't really need those extra spaces in there. That just confuses us sometimes when we're trying to count them. Um, so you can go ahead and just 
put in your numbers as they are, as the actual lots exist. You don't have to skip any lines for non-existent lots. And then move on to the next columns that have to do with the type of structures on those lots. So as you can see, we have these five columns. Um, you'll notice that it goes A, B, D, E, F. It skips column C. Um, this is because on the registration form itself, if you'll recall, there's a table on that form that calls for the same exact information, but just like the number of those types of homes. Um, number like the letter C, that is just a total of uh, mobile homes in the park. So we don't include that in the column because you don't have to do that twice because that's essentially columns A and B. And on the online registration form, that's automatically calculated for the paper forms. You do have to add them together. Uh, but that's why there's no column C. It just goes A, B, D, E, F. Um, now to kind of more specifically discuss how you mark your types of lots, um, starting with the occupied tenant owned mobile homes. This should be homes that are owned by individuals that own their mobile homes and are renting lots from the park. This also will include homes that are owned by an individual homeowner that are renting out their home to another person, but the lot is still something that they're paying a lot rent on. Um, those are also still considered occupied tenant owned mobile homes, as well as if, say, the tenant owns their home, but they're not currently living in it necessarily, but they're still under a lease agreement and paying lot rents that is also still considered a tenant owned mobile home. Uh, so you would mark all of those types of homes as well as the typical, like the person owns their home, they're living in it and they're paying you a lot rent um, and have a lease agreement that those are the occupied tenant owned mobile homes. Now for occupied park owned mobile homes, these are mobile homes obviously owned by the park, the park business or the individual that owns the park uh, that are potentially being lived in by uh, park staff or the park owners themselves, um, you'll mark all of those in this column. If the home is something that is a park owned mobile home but is not currently occupied, you will want to mark that just as a vacant mobile home. Don't also mark it as an occupied park owned mobile home, do one or the other. But if it's not occupied, then obviously it's a vacant mobile home, so just mark it as a vacant mobile home. Um, and then if the structure is not a mobile home, that's where you mark anything in column F. Um, not mobile homes obviously include things like a stick built house or an apartment or uh, other types of mobile vehicle homes that aren't actually considered a mobile home or manufactured home under state statute. That could include things like RVs, campers, fifth wheels. Those types of vehicles don't are not considered mobile homes in state law and therefore don't fall under the Mobile Home Park Act and don't need to be marked as a tenant owned mobile home. So these, if you have these types of lots, you can just mark those as other. They don't go towards your registration fee and so you don't want to mark them in column A. Um, you can put them in column F. And of course, that what is self-explanatory, if you have a vacant lot, there's nothing on the lot, just mark the vacant lot. Um, and that should cover those columns and how to fill those out. If you have further questions, our contact information will be at the end of this video and you can send us your specific questions. Um, now going on to the red section, which is the new items required post October 1st of 2022. Uh, the, Tenant mailing addresses in particular only apply to occupied tenant owned mobile homes. Um, anything that you have marked in column A over here, we need their mailing address over here. And this means the mailing address for the actual owner of the mobile home. So for those homes that are maybe owned by a uh, an owner, but then are being rented out to a separate tenant, um, we want the actual homeowner's mailing address. Um, not the renter of the owner, of the mobile home owner, um, not their mailing address. Um, so, yeah, we need the mailing addresses here. If 
the mailing address is the same as the locked at physical address over here, you don't need to rewrite them all. You could just mark them as same, um, and that is perfectly acceptable. Um, now, the rent increase columns, this applies to all mobile home lots, um, occupied tenant owned and occupied park owned mobile home lots. So newly required in state statute is that we need the date and the amount of the most recent rent increases for those lots or homes. Uh, for tenant owned mobile homes, if you've never increased their rent, then you do want to provide the date of their lease signing for the lot agreement. And you can put zero in the most recent rent increase amount. Uh, for park owned homes that you're renting out, same thing. Um, you can put the date of the lease signing or the lease renewal and put um, the zero. If it is a lease renewal, you'll want to probably put the rent increase amount that was between the two different lease signings um, that is generally considered still a rent increase, I believe. Um, if you instead recently purchased the park and don't yet have this information, we will ask you to contact the seller or the person that you purchased the park from to get that information. Um, they are required under state law to provide that information to you when they sold the park to you. Um, the program can't accept registration documents without this detail because of how state law is now written. Uh, so if you've recently purchased the park, you'll want to get that information from the seller. If you cannot get that information from the seller, the next best thing we can potentially recommend is that you contact um, your individual tenants and see what their say is on what um, the rent increase and in date was. Um, once you have everything filled out, uh, you have each line has only one type of structure marked in these columns. You have your mailing addresses, your rent increase information. You can then prepare to send this to the program. Um, we do ask that you send it to us as an Excel or other spreadsheet type document. This helps uh, staff be able to process your registrations faster as we do count every line that you provide us and compare it to your registration form. Um, and if we have an Excel document, we can use various Excel functions to make this process faster. So if you have more than 20 mobile homes in particular, we do ask that you send it to us as an Excel document. Um, you can upload it to the online form as an Excel document, or you can email it to us if you're planning to mail your registration form you can email us the Excel file and we'll match it to your registration form when it arrives in the mail. Um, our email address is at the end of this video, so just go ahead and email it to us. Um, if you have less than 20 mobile homes or if you're just absolutely not savvy at all with Excel files, um, we can work with that and we'll work with you to get that figured out. Um, or we'll just you can print out the actual list and we'll, we will count it as is. I hope you have found this training useful, but if you have specific questions or need additional assistance, please reach out. Our staff are happy to help. We can be reached by email at mhpop at state.co.us or by calling our toll-free number at 1-833-924-1147. Please provide us your specific questions or at least a general idea of what you may need assistance with, and we will respond as quickly as we are able. Thank you.